Are you brave enough to taste what some people call the most disgusting food on the planet? Do not eat this at home. Let's begin fancy with some wine and cheese. This Italian cheese called Casumarzu is filled with thousands of live maggots. It's officially called the most dangerous cheese in the world. Casumarzu is made by special flies lying their eggs on pecorino cheese until these eggs become maggots that eat and digest it. And yes, these warm thingies stay there for you to eat them. Oh my god! And speaking of cheese, how about a glass of dead baby mice wine? In China, it's traditional to drown little hairless mice in rice wine. After it ferments for over a year, it's believed to cure asthma and many other diseases. Just be ready to taste something like gasoline. Or if you're braver, bite into a pickled mouse. I haven't even drank it and I already feel dizzy. How about we take a break for a little snack? Would you like some virgin boy eggs for appetizer? No joke! In some places around the world, vendors collect schoolboy's urine in buckets, then put it in a pot with eggs to soak and boil for several hours. They do this until the egg whites become yellowish and the yolks turn green. If you eat this, you will not get heat stroke. These eggs cooked in urine are fragrant. They are good for your health. Wow. For those who are still strong enough to watch this video, time for some seafood. Shirako is a Japanese delicacy filled with fish semen. It tastes fishy, creamy and grainy and you can serve it on top of rice, fry as tempura or eat it with your favorite sushi. Next on the menu, hakal, also known as fermented rotten shark. Icelanders bury a dead shark underground until it gets drained of poisonous juice. When that's done, they hang it out to dry, then serve it in pieces. As to how it tastes, let's just hear it from the food legend himself. The single worst thing I've ever put in my mouth. Night fam. With all honesty, I feel quite weird about this food. But you know what? We can spend all day calling these foods dangerous or disgusting, but if in the eyes of others there's still a cultural pride, a magical cure or a way to survive, if they are fine eating rotten cheese, stinky wine, urine-coated eggs, fish sperm or fermented sharks and birds, then who am I to judge? as long as they don't start a global pandemic. What the hell is happening with journalism in 2020? I've just seen an interview on CNN, a huge respectable network that we are supposed to go to for facts. But it could have been any other network, to be honest, it's happening everywhere. It was an interview between a politician who's conservative and a journalist who's clearly liberal. And the problem with that interview was that the journalist was not asking questions to the politician, he was interrogating him on his political beliefs. He was pushing his personal agenda on the person he was supposed to interview and that is exactly what is happening with journalism in today's world. There is no more integrity and, and journalism based on facts. There are opinions and there are picking sides. I don't want to switch from one channel to another channel and get two totally separate opinions about the same event. How is it possible? Is it possible that one side is always lying and the other side is truthful? I don't think so. What I think is happening is that journalism is not journalism anymore. It is opinions and political beliefs put into words to manipulate the audience. That's what I think is happening. And it is very dangerous because people don't know where to get facts anymore. It's pretty much what you choose to watch. It's what your political beliefs are gonna become because you will be manipulated. I want to give you an analogy. If you take a container and you put two types of ants inside of the container, black ants and red ants. If you hold the container like this, the ants will coexist in peace. They will find their spots and they will live. But as soon as you start shaking the container, 
the ants will become confused and they will start fighting as long as the red ones or the black ones win and survive. Until the whole species is dead, they will fight. And I think what is happening right now, a big part of the reason why we are so damn divided is because journalism and media is doing this with the container. They're shaking the hell out of us. So we, the people, we are fighting. Journalism should be based on facts. And if you think that it happens only in America, because I use this example, oh no, I have just been in Poland, I saw it in India, it's happening all around the world. The media has chosen their political side and they don't report on facts anymore, they report on their beliefs. Opinionated journalism. And you know why it frustrates me so much? Because I have this channel on Facebook and obviously I have my political beliefs. I would say I, I lean towards being liberal, yet I must say with recent events I'm slowly pushing back to, to conservative. It doesn't matter anyway, because when I cover topics, what I want is I want to tell you about what is happening and not push my agenda on you to make you believe in what I believe in. Unless we talk about being good people and things like that, but not politically. So if I have an integrity as a private guy here on Facebook, how the hell are we accepting these big, huge networks to have no integrity and state their opinions and beliefs? It's very dangerous. So, please be careful. Ask yourself a question, because I know a lot of people watching here probably don't like the other side. Ask yourself a question why you don't like them, because most likely you don't like them because of what you've heard on TV and the news. I don't want to, to, to have people disliking each other, I want us to, to love each other more. But it, as long as the media shakes this container, we will not find peace. So the more people realize it, the closer we will be to understanding that something is off with the world right now. And we are being manipulated. But I hand it off to you. Think for yourself. And... I hope you find the right answers. Most of us, when we hear SARS, we think of the virus. But right now, SARS means something different and not enough people know about it. Night fam, I want to be honest with you. We have a problem in the way we treat less popular countries. When the popular America faces police brutality, the whole world stands behind them. For George Floyd, we have campaigned on the streets of UK, France and Japan because America is a popular country. But end SARS protests that most of us have not heard of because they come from the unpopular Nigeria where black lives matter but less. This is the concerning story of SARS. Many people in Nigeria know one thing. Police are not your friends. In this country of 191 million people, almost everyone has a story of assault by the officer. They had to learn how to live with it until last week. A video showing police officers dragging two men out of a hotel and shooting one of them went viral. This huge abuse of power started a national outcry. People went on the streets to protest. And just last week, at least 10 protesters have died from the hand of SARS. Not the virus, but the police unit that stands for Special Anti-Robbery Squad. SARS was created to stop criminals, but over the years, instead of protecting their people... The police that are supposed to protect the people have become the oppressor of the same people. It's bad, and that's why we cannot be blind to Africa anymore. See, part of the reason why some African leaders get away with their crimes is because they know the world will turn a blind eye to it. These bad, corrupt leaders feel above the law 
Because no one cares. It is the very fact that we don't care about all lives equally that Nigeria and many other countries face such big issues. And so I went on the internet and did some research on how much exactly people don't care. The outcry of Nigerian people has a couple hundred thousand views on a huge network BBC, while the recent American protests gathered tens of millions. <sighs> From the very beginning, I'm building a movement that sees all lives equally. Not black lives, not white lives, not blue or red lives. On Project Nightfall, all lives always matter equally. Only recently, we have campaigned against American police brutality in the streets of London, France, Japan and many more. Now, the least we can do is to campaign on social media for... Nigeria. May they be the voice of all the less popular countries where the leaders and the police feel like they are above the law. May we the people come together so that one day we can say that all lives matter equally.